This video is about finding E fields at a point in space. So let's start with a negative charge sitting out in space, and we're going to find an E field at a point in space due to other E fields. So for this negative charge, we know that there's an E field around it because any charged body has an electric field, and that electric field is the path a positive particle would take. So if I put a positive particle anywhere near this negative charge, it's going to come towards a negative charge, and that's how I've got those arrows there. So they're the E field. But when I'm looking for an E field at a point in space, I know that the E field is going to go right through it, through that point in space. So what I know so far is that we defined earlier that the force, electrostatic force, due to uh, electric e field, is equal to F equals Q1 times E, where Q1 would have been the charge that's out there in space. That's the force felt on that charge in space. But I don't have a charge out there. Now let's look at this with Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law is F is equal to KQ1 Q2 over R squared. See where Q2 is? Q2 is the source of the electric field, and Q1 is the particle that would go out there in the middle of space. Now if I look at this and rearrange it and set one force equal to the other force, then KQ1Q2 over R squared is equal to Q1 times E. And if I solve this for E by dividing by Q1, E is equal to KQ2 over R squared, where Q2 is the charged body that's creating the electric field itself. So that's the important formula here. E, the strength of the electric field, is equal to KQ over R squared. So whenever I want to find the magnitude of the electric field, that's the formula I'm going to use. But this formula doesn't tell us anything about direction, just the magnitude. All right, so now let's use this with a couple particles and find the, the uh, net electric field at a point in space. So I'm going to find the E field at this indicated point in space. So you can see how I've got it kind of pulsating as a point in space. And I've got two charges. I've got charge B, which is negative 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19, and charge C, which is positive 7.2 times 10 to the negative 19. They are 6.55 microns away and 4.11 microns down below. So I'm going to find the direction. To find the direction, I'm going to look at the E fields and see what the E fields are doing. So remember, the E field is defined as a path a positive particle would take. So I need to ask myself, if I put a positive particle in this space, what would each particle, charged particle do? So if I put a particle here, I know that C is going to repel it because C is always also positive. So that charged particle is going to move up. So that's going to be the direction of the E field due to point C, or particle C. And I'll do the same thing for B. So I do this kind of thought experiment and think, okay, if there's a positive particle there, and what would it do due to B? Well, they're opposite charges, so B would attract that particle. So now I have the two pieces of the electric field. All right, so now what I've got to do is I've got to find the magnitude of the E field due to C and the E field due to B. And we just learned the formula for finding the magnitude. That was E is equal to KQ over R squared. So I'll put in my numbers, K, Q, and R squared. And this is for point C, so the numbers are for point C, the distance and the charge. And that gives me the field strength for C. So the electric field strength is 383 newtons per coulomb. I'll do the same thing for B, put in the numbers associated with B. And when I do that, I get about 100 newtons per coulomb. So that's the length of each one of those arrows, the blue arrows, E due to C and E due to B. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm doing the same thing I did with free body diagrams. I'm summing up the electric fields in the x direction. In this case, there's only one, and it's due to B. And I'm going to sum up the electric fields in the y direction. In this case, there's only one, and it's due to C. If they were forces, I'd be breaking them up into components and looking at all the forces. And I do the same thing with electric fields. It's just that instead of forces, I have electric fields. All right, so if I look at this, this is going to form a solutions triangle. This is going to be the give me the direction of the net electric field. And I'll take the horizontal, uh, sum of all the four electric fields in the horizontal direction. And I can see it's going to the right, and that's the one due to B, because that's the only charged particle I have that's pulling horizontally. And the other one is going upwards, so that's the other side of the triangle. And just like we did with free body diagrams, I've got a solutions triangle. So it's going to have a hypotenuse, which is the net electric field, since the components are electric fields, and it's going to have an angle to it. So now all I'm going to do is find these pieces using trig and geometry. So here I'll use the trig and use Pythagorean's theorem to find the magnitude of the net electric field. And there it is at 369 newtons per coulomb. And to find the direction, I'm going to use trig, and I'll use the tangent function. So tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Therefore, theta is equal to 75.3 degrees. Great. So there I have it, the net electric field at that point in space. 
just to kind of build on what we already know, this is very similar to some stuff we've done before. When we did Coulomb's law for point charges and electric fields, we can actually make a Venn diagram of the process. Blue being electric field, red being the Coulomb's law force, the net electrostatic force. And you can see that at a certain point, everything comes together. In other words, I'm doing the same thing. I'm breaking up the forces or the electric fields and the components, um, combining the light components, adding up the vertical components, combine the results, get a solutions triangle, and using trig to find the angle and Pythagorean's theory, theorem to find the length of the hypotenuse. Same process, what's different is how I calculate the magnitudes and how I determine those original directions. Okay, so now for the final question is, what does your paper look like when you turn it in? So what kind of work am I looking for? Well, if this was the problem, the problem was already written down on the page, you can see how I've organized it. So I've, I've told you, the reader, what I'm finding. I'm finding the electric field strength. I'm finding electric field strength to be. And then if I scroll down the page a little bit, you can see how they're making the solutions triangle. And I'm finding the net force, and I'm finding the direction of theta. So these are all the steps that I'm looking for on your paper. So your final paper is going to look something like this. And you can see, too, that I've also drawn on my original diagram, electric field. The goal here is to try to communicate as much as you can about how you're solving this problem.